after a pretty rough week, D-Lab's back. I had a terrible go of it, guys. I caught a bug. I never get sick. I'm one of those guys that always wash my hands. I use some of that goop you put on your hands, right, to disinfect it. I stay away from people when they got colds. But guess what happened to me? Yeah, you can hear it in my voice. I got it. I was working with a guy. He was an outside contractor. And he came in, and the minute I saw him, I knew something was wrong, right? I could see that clammy look, and he was kind of like coughing and, you know, doing this thing in his arm. I thought, well, I'll maintain my distance, and I should be good to go, right? Oh, no. We're working in this cabinet. And as I'm in here showing him what was going on, he let out a big old cough, and I could just feel it getting me in the back of the neck. And I thought, no. And that happened two or three times. Luckily, you know, I escaped that, but unfortunately, it obviously latched on to D-Lab. So come around uh, Tuesday night, I felt it. I felt the heaviness, and my throat was getting a little sore, and I thought, ah. Oh. So I started down in the vitamin C, right? Down in the T, thought, I can kill it. I got up Wednesday, man, it was like Niagara Falls, and I'm not going to go into that. But I was coughing and hacking. I thought, oh man, I got to get through three more days of work. So come Thursday, I was miserable. I could barely get through the day and I thought, nope, that's it. So I took Friday off to recoup. And it's a good thing I did because Friday and Saturday were horrible. All right. So anyway, D-Lab's back at it. So I thought, well, I better shave if I'm going to put on a presentation because as I was sick, that's all I was thinking about is what can I do for you guys, right? In, in the condition I was in, I thought, I can't get on there, I, I look terrible. So I shaved, and guess what I did? Yeah, I axed myself up really good too, right? So I got a big old whoosh, little cherry on the face. I haven't done that in years. So as you know, I usually have wine in my videos, but I haven't had a touch of wine since Tuesday night, right? But we do have Ocean spray juice, right? Cranberry stuff, which is really good for my cold. And I've got a vitamin C pill, right? So there, it appears as though I'm drinking and enjoying wine. But this video is about helping you choose the proper audio generator for your amplifier or radio repair. I've got some boat anchors back here. I've got some cool ones, scope, and an amp to test, and I'm going to help you to select the proper audio generator for the work that you want to do on tube amps without getting yourself a piece of junk that drive you nuts. So here we go, D-Lab's back at it. Well, here's the lineup of what I could scrounge around D-Lab's archives. Had a lot of these old boat anchors in my basement, like this HP wide range oscillator. I think that's called a CD200. This is a ICO model 377. That's a tube type audio sign and square wave generator. Got two of these little solid state Tenma zits, these little handheld pieces of junk. I'll show you those. Got my scope, of course, monitoring the output of one of my generators. We're going to do our testing using this little D Lab amp, which I call the Tramp. All right, we'll get into that in a little bit. Here's my go to generator which is my Wave Tech. I've featured this in a lot of videos. These little Viz units are pretty nice, but the generator that we're going to feature in this video is this Leader LAG25. It's solid state, but man is it a cool generator. But first, we'll go over the pros and cons of the different type audio generators. So the first question is, should you buy a tube audio generator like the ICO 377? Or should you be looking for the solid state type, like the Viz or the Leader, to work on your tube amp? Well, here's the way I look at it. If you've just built your first tube amp, and you want to make sure that thing's performing the way it should, in other words, a nice clean sine wave, or let's say that you just repaired an old tube amplifier, and you want to make sure that thing's working right, you probably shouldn't use an old drifty tube audio generator because they have problems all their own. The distortion that you get, the hum, etc., etc. 
from the years of use. So I would highly suggest that you find yourself a nice, stable, solid state audio generator. But there's things you need to look out for on those too. So yep, even D-Lab that's a big fan of tubes steers towards the solid state audio generators for my tube amplifier work. But there's things that I look for in these generators that I want you to be aware of, okay? So yeah, this is a solid state unit, and as you can see, it's got this tuning dial. The WaveTech is also solid state, it's got a tuning dial. And the leader also has this tuning dial here, right? But the thing is in common between these three units is they all use a variable capacitor for tuning that frequency, okay? So they are a true audio type of generator, whereas some of these cheaper models that you'll find on the market that have the illusion of looking like this, such as the Tenmas, the GW Instec, um, Alicos, and anything with no name on it, are usually a different type of tuning system. Even though it'll look like a tuning cap, I think they use like an encoder or some type of a voltage type tuning system. And I find that it generates distortion. When you're sweeping through the frequency on those type generators, you'll see distortion in the sine wave. You'll see these little funny ripples and you'll think, is that my amp causing that problem? Well, you don't get that with pure analog tuning using tuning capacitors. So what I would suggest is if you're looking for something like this, either find a leader, which is good, these Viz units are pretty commonly available. Ico made a unit called the 378, but it has a meter for frequency, so it's a little bit confusing. Heathkit, of course, made all kinds of generators, but you've got to you know, be careful because the Heathkits, depending on who made it, could be a real nightmare, right? But Heathkit also had a brand called Heath Built. They were factory-made units and they were rock solid, very high quality units, but they're hard to find. Wavetex, you'll find these on the market. There are several different models of the Wavetex. These were extremely pricey guys. These were built for the military. Highly suggest if you can find a Wavetech to snag it. And there's another company called Kron Height, and they have a bunch of different generators and they're also top quality. I believe they're made in Germany. I had one of those for a while and they were great. But let me show you why my go-to unit is the Leader Lag 25. All right, so taking a look at these three solid-state signal generators, there's one thing they all have in common, and that is this attenuator switch. On this one, they call it Range. Down here on the WaveTech, it actually says attenuator. And over here on the Lag, they call it the Output Multiplier. Okay, that attenuator is very important when you're doing audio work. This allows you to control your input signal. Now if I were to go over here and look at the ICO, you can see all that it has is a level output pot. Okay, So this pot's going to swing like 0 to 10 volt sine wave. So I mean where you need to be for tube work is like way down here because you only want like 150 millivolts to 200 millivolts drive to simulate the guitar. Same with the HP unit, just an amplitude control, right? And then you got these little tinker toys, all right? These little switch boxes, I call them. And all they have is a zero or negative 20 dB attenuator switch. And then your frequencies, you flip this little switch and it goes boing, boing, boing. You can watch a sine wave jumping all around, causes all kinds of nice noise. I don't know what these are good for, but it's not tube audio work. Back to the Leader LAG25 generator. Now, Leader made a whole bunch of different audio generators, and their models always started with LAG, which is Leader Audio Generator, right? And this unit here, the 25, is actually fairly hard to find. I was very happy to add it to the D Lab collection. I just love the looks. It's like screaming vintage, right? So, what you need to do is make yourself a cable. This is a shielded cable. And on this end, it's got a quarter inch plug that would go to the input of your amplifier that you're testing. I always leave the shell 
off of the plug and I leave these terminals open. The reason is, is I need to check that amplitude before I connect it to my amp. So in that case, I've got my probe hooked up. The little Watsu 5702 is looking at that output. I'm at 50 millivolts per division. So you can see we've got about a 200 millivolt signal, right? So in this case, we'll just kind of leave it where it's sitting because we're really not concentrating on frequency. We're looking more at amplitude control, right? So my output multiplier is at times 100, and then I can use my fine adjust. You can watch the scope, and I can dial in that amplitude. So there is 100 millivolts, there's 200, so on and so forth. So let's say I put it at 200 millivolts, and then I take my multiplier, and I go to times 10. You can see she goes right on down. I'm going to go back up, and I can adjust it. It's very nice and smooth, easy to control. That's the beauty of the attenuator, okay? Those other generators, they'd be all squirrely and drive you nuts trying to dial in this output and keep it stable. And you need this stable because you're going to be looking at the gain of your amplifier. So it's that input versus what you're getting for output. So you want a good controllable signal. So you need a generator that has an attenuator. So we've got our audio generator set up for the frequency and the amplitude that we want for testing an amplifier. So I've put my plug to the input of the amp. My controls are volume, treble, and bass. This is a push-pull 6AQ5 amplifier. The scope now is set for one volt per division instead of the 50 millivolts and now we'll bring up the volume and you'll see it on the scope. So this is that audio generator being amplified by the 6AQ5s. You see she has a lot of amplitude, okay? Now let's see what we can get. I'll take my range up a little bit so we can really crank it. I'm going to crank up my treble. Let's see what we get. Look at there. Some really cool distortion. Kind of looks like the Sears Tower. So, so I've returned the tone controls on the amp for flat. And we're back at one volt per division. So I can bring up my amplitude. And now, if I vary my frequency, you'll see that on the scope. If I bring up my treble, you'd see the increase. If I take my frequency down to a lower frequency, now you would see the bass doing its thing. So these things are very handy for troubleshooting tube amps. A much more controlled method than plugging in a guitar and saying, yeah, I think that sounds good. With all those harmonics, I really don't know how you could properly repair an amp without having an audio generator and a decent scope. So there are some key things for you to consider when selecting an audio generator. And these things are not that expensive. That little Lag 25, they're well under $100. Same with the Viz units and a lot of the Heathkit units. Like I say, on the Heath kits, just be careful, because if it was a kit, it could have some pretty crummy construction under that hood that you can't see. And if you're not into repairing or restoring that old gear, stay away from it. Get yourself a manufactured type like the Leader or the Viz or a Wave Tech. If you can get the Wave Tech, I guarantee you, you'll be in heaven. What a great instrument. And as for scopes, I've already had a couple presentations on those. The little Watsus, once again, under $100. You don't need a lot of money to set up this test bench. You just need to know what to look for. So hopefully this was good for you. And I'll see you again. Hopefully next time we'll be feeling better.